Black Fridays, Thanksgivings, Christmases, New Year's Lemony, but or not Sabia Tafanaklo, there have Langlit Tadargo Wagani, Blue, San Jose, California, and Migan, you would Ethiopia and Naya Ethiopia with a judge. Bamet Balumetic, Logan Makatalam Hun, Tatk out and a stall. December I missed, who let the shyan, Kawan PM Jemro, Dink is a gidget as the guy toll. Ersom, Bakabir Tatar toll. Yakabrin Guduch, Ambassador Fitzumarega, Gazet and Yamat Tasabia Katala, Artist Tesfai Sima, Adarashu. I am Mr. Zero Zero Masonic Drive now. Yimtu, December I missed San Jose I Kerm, Ethiopia in Natin Axal, Logan Darash, Wagan. With the boat Agarati Mitnoru, Ethiopia when. Ethiopia, Kagabach Betty Luna Fatana, Ashana Fiona Mitota, but Ankaral Jo Tabertatana, Tagat Lono. Yenin Bemeradat, Bemelo Alamimi Gang Utopiawen, a Yadda Ragutia Lonka Sakasi, a jig Yemi Beratata Hono Tagain Twal. Let Utopia Yemen set out the gaff, Yetakanaja, and do Margaritun Melisola Megan Batul Zend, and what Yaganzab Mastel Alafia Count Macfet, as Felagi Hono Bemaganga too, and no, Coach Gudaina, Kaganza Minister Garbe Metababer, Yikwami account, Takaf Twal. Bazim Maserat, Count Jamru Bemelo Alamim Tigangu Utopiawen. Mikatanut account could rush by Metagam, Ganzeb, Master Alafim Chulumonun, Bakbrot and Gals Allen. Accountun, Mangist back at the time Mikot at Tarabamonu, Ganzabu, Darswal, Alder as a Mimilon Sukat, Muluba Mulu, Yaso Gadoal. Bokominet, Yaganzeb de Gafla Madagimit Felugum Honor. Betela Yumangarus Subsabatu, Ganzeb la Masca Batiamit Feluguhulu, Yen an account, Tatagamu. Lepebalu, Cadolar Nairochi, Geloche Ganzeb, Ainatochinimit Tagamu de Guchum. Bazi account, metagam chila latu. Agarachin topia, rasachon, lemeswat gujubunu jutra, helun noana, and natoit a bagal. Agaron, zarionu, medagafi jamru. Hello, this is Insight from Ethiopian Satellite Television. Today we will be discussing the US policy on Ethiopia. To discuss this issue with us, Ambassador uh, Jeffrey Feltman. Ambassador Jeffrey Feltman is the American diplomat serving as the US Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa. Before this job, Ambassador Feltman was United Nations Under Secretary General for Political Affairs and he served as U.S. Ambassador in many uh, Middle East countries, including uh, Haiti. Uh, Ambassador, welcome. Thank you very much for, for having me. I, I, I look forward to, to talking directly to you and to your audience, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, Ambassador, as I was preparing uh, for this uh, interview, I listened to the, your speech at uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, Institute of Peace, uh, and I was very, very happy that you mentioned uh, you became aware of Ethiopian history at an early age. So I'm going to play a very brief clip from your speech at the U.S. Institute of Peace. Boy, growing up in a small town in the in the Midwestern United States, I knew of Ethiopia's biblical references. You know, as the origin of coffee, it had been a World War II close ally of the United States, and as a courageous example of African independence against against colonialism. I didn't have the advantage growing up in a small town Midwest to know members of that talented Ethiopian diaspora that have contributed so much to our country. So uh, I was very happy about that, and I want to tell you that 
uh, almost all Ethiopians, both abroad and back at home, uh, they have a special affiliation with uh, Ethiopia. So now I, I go to my question. Uh, I want to start with breaking news. As you might have heard today, the Ethiopian government has uh, announced that it has taken over significant territory uh, from the TPLF in the, northern, in the northern part of the Ethiopia. Are you aware of that? I mean, we're following we're following the news very very closely, um, and of course, we share the goal of wanting to see an end to this conflict, and we share the goal of wanting to see the the TPLF, TDF, whatever you call them, back in Tigray and out of of, of Amhara and Afar. But let me also uh, make reference to that Ethiopian diaspora that your that your um, network reaches, because as I said in those remarks at USIP, the Ethiopians in the United States have so enriched our country, the United States, and they are a, a linchpin for the close relationship between our two countries. And they also, I, I just admire them for what they've done to promote dignity and human rights for Ethiopians in Ethiopia. So I'm delighted to have this opportunity to be able to speak directly to your audience. Thank you, Ambassador. So uh, uh, if the Ethiopian uh, army is advancing, and as you said, if your interest is for uh, the TPLF to go back to Tigray, why is the embassy uh, uh, urging its citizens to leave Ethiopia almost every day? If the security condition or if the advance of the TPLF has been arrested, why is it needed to make uh, uh, such recommendations every day? Well, as you said, as you said yourself, this is this is breaking news. We're still evaluating what this means. We're still evaluating the the facts on the the facts on the ground, and the the embassy announcement was basically based on practicality. That um, you know, Addis Airport is operating normally. There are commercial flights with seats available, and that it's just contingency planning. That there are a lot of Americans in Ethiopia, and that if they were thinking about leaving, it's best to do so when the, when commercial options were available. It's simply a matter of practicality and contingency planning. Um, but I, I think that your question is is suggesting something deeper, and I just want to I just want to assure you that our policy toward Ethiopia is based is grounded on our desire to see a stable unified Ethiopia. We support the stability, the unity, and the territorial integrity of Ethiopia. And it's one of the reasons why we want to see this conflict end. Um, we, you know, that the, what we're promoting is a type of cessation of hostilities without preconditions, a reaching of, reaching of humanitarian assistance to those in need wherever they are in the country, negotiated ce ceasefire. We, we want to see the environment created that is conducive for that political dialogue that Prime Minister Abiy himself has said that he that, that he and the Parliament want to promote. So we're looking we're looking for ways to try to produce a peaceful environment conducive to the political conversation among Ethiopians that the Prime Minister has said as part of his vision. Uh, Ambassador, most Ethiopians uh, do not question the intentions of uh, the United States. Uh, uh, most Ethiopians uh, believe uh, the United States and Ethiopia have deep ties. And it has been a very nice country for those of us who migrated to the United States. However, uh, over the last year, the policy of the United States has been of, of, of concern. Most of the policies have been formulated without input from Ethiopians, which make up uh, 80 to 90 percent of the, uh, the population, but, all, but based on the narratives of the TPLF and uh, the people uh, that the TPLF has uh, assembled over 30 years of its rule. So do you think uh, the United States government will and should include uh, voices from Ethiopians? Um, sir, we have, we, have, we have had a long series of consultations, um, private consultations with government officials, private consultations with representatives that Prime Minister Abiy has, has sent to Washington to talk with us, um, because we agree that the bilateral relationship between Ethiopia and the United States has benefited both countries. We agree that this, that this, that this war um, needs to stop, that Ethiopia needs to continue to be, play its role as a linchpin of stability in the, in the Horn of Africa. 
what has concerned us are human rights abuses, um, lack of humanitarian access to those in need, wherever they happen to be in need, Amhara, Afar, Tigray, wherever. And so the, our, our public comments have um, been addressing concerns we have that are not on behalf of any one part of Ethiopia or, or another. It's on behalf of those Ethiopians that are suffering from a conflict that we all wish to see. We're not siding with one group of Ethiopians against another group of, e of, e of Ethiopians. The Prime Minister has a very um, impressive vision of an Ethiopian identity that transcends the, the sort of ethnic, the ethnic divisions inside the country. Um, our policy is based on that need for cessation of hostilities without negotiate, without um, conditions, the need for humanitarian assistance to reach wherever it is that, that's needed. And I'm not just talking about Afar, Amhara, and, and Tigray. I'm talking about the sorts of assistance that the Somali region needs because of drought, the type of assistance that the U.S. is giving in Beni Shango um, for for flood victims in Gambala. We want to see humanitarian assistance go wherever it's needed. We want to see the human, the human rights respected of all Ethiopians, wherever they happen to be. And I know that that's a goal that's shared by the Ethiopian diaspora that has worked so hard to promote human rights in Ethiopia and dignity for Ethiopian people. Ambassador, uh, as you said, a couple of the, uh, the, the problems arise uh, from two things. One is at the beginning of the war, the U.S. government was uh, making false equivalence uh, uh, between the government of Ethiopia elected. Uh, to your credit, you have acknowledged the Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed has been elected, but you were uh, creating a false equivalence between the, pres the, the Prime Minister of Ethiopia and a belligerent group like TPLF. As you know, TPLF has been an oppressive government for 30 years. Ethiopians have been struggling against that. So one of the misperceptions of the U.S. policy is based on the perceived equivalence created by the by the U.S. administration between the uh, Ethiopian government and the TPLF. How would you respond to that? Well, I think all of us, um, Ethiopian and friends of Ethiopia, all of us have a responsibility in playing a role in, in tapping down the incitement, in creating the atmospheres for, in creating an atmosphere for peace, in creating that atmosphere that allows the Prime Minister's initiative for a political dialogue to go to go forward um, and all of us includes government officials like us but also includes the Ethiopians around the world um, they too have a responsibility in preserving the unity territorial integrity stability of Ethiopia by finding ways to start um, turning back the incitement of of stopping the demonization of certain segments of Ethiopia and looking at just the importance of that unity of Ethiopia and the importance that Ethiopia, uh, the role that Ethiopia plays regionally and, and internationally. Um, so it's, it's not so much equivalence one side versus the other side, it's a responsibility on all of our shoulders to stop the incitement, to um, press for cessation of hostilities without conditions, and to strengthen the unity of, of Ethiopia. Uh, we agree, Ethiopians actually, as, uh, as I said at my introduction, we believe uh, the root cause of the problem is ethnic politics, identity politics. The problem is the uh, TPLF uh, instituted or uh, an ethnic federalism structure that was supported over 30 years by the U.S. government. Uh, the, the, the political uh, environment itself is forced to be identity pay based. So there is some, uh, 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 this forces people to identify political opponents in terms of ethnicity. So if you want Ethiopians to be united, and since the U.S. is formed on individual rights, why don't you support a constitutional uh, change agreed upon by everybody based on the principles of individual rights? I mean, we believe in the, the, the in the dignity of every Ethiopian. We believe in the basic human rights of every of every Ethiopian. But how Ethiopian governs itself internally, how the internal boundaries are 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 drawn inside Ethiopia, um, 
what the powers are in the capital versus the state, those are not questions for the United States. Those are questions for the Ethiopians to discuss. But they're questions for the Ethiopians to, to discuss peacefully, you know, constitutionally. As I said, the Prime Minister has told me, per, has told me himself of his vision for a you know, political conversation, a political dialogue under parliamentary um, oversight that would address some of the questions that, that, you're, that you're raising. That's great. That's for the Ethiopians to discuss. That's not, that's not our concern. Our concern is the stability, the um, unity, the territorial integrity of Ethiopians, I keep saying, and the dignity of the individual Ethiopians, the respect for human rights that should apply to every, to every Ethiopian. But where, how, how Ethiopia is governed inside is a question for the Ethiopians to discuss among themselves, peacefully and, and constitutionally. Mr. Ambassador, as a U.S. citizen and uh, as a person who benefited from the political system in the United States, and also as a witness of the former Soviet Union and Yugoslavia, uh, uh, the United States as a friend of Ethiopia, while it cannot determine what political uh, environment or what political system we adapt, it should err on the right of democracy, on the right of, uh, on the primacy of individual rights. We know that stability begins with justice and liberty, and liberty is derived when a political uh, uh, environment or a political uh, system is based not on differences but on common uh, values. Shouldn't the United States be encouraging really the liberty and individual rights? Yes, and the justice that you that you brought up is another is another important issue. Justice and accountability over what's happened over the past year is an important part of of a transition from a military conflict to a to a political discussion. Um, but again, these are mostly questions that the Ethiopians themselves have to have to address. But to address these successfully, the the fighting needs to stop, and the the discussion needs to move from a battlefield discussion to one that um, is between Ethiopians in a in a peaceful in a peaceful environment. So to the, that question, um, when you talk about justice, you say justice over the last years. Uh, don't you think justice should be uh, addressed over the last thirty years of TPLF rule? That's a question. That's a question that you that you, the Ethiopians themselves can can address in the in a conversation bet between you. Um, I'm you know I'm speaking from my UN experience. I was at the UN for six years. I saw lots of conflict situations. And I saw lots of peace processes, and the the peace processes that that worked, um, that stuck, that stayed, that had that that were sustainable were those where. There was a sense of dignity by the particip by the participants that the atmosphere was conducive for being able to brainstorm about ways forward, and where there was a discussion about accountability for for past grievances, um, and some redress, some sense of some sense of justice for for victims of conflict. Um, these are questions mostly these are questions for the Ethiopians but but they're questions that I think would need to be addressed as part of a, as part of a peace process that again promotes the the unity the solidarity of of Ethiopia I mean the Prime Minister has a very you know inspiring vision about you know an Ethiopian identity that transcends those that transcends those ethnic divisions um, but unfortunately right now the situation to us, is not conducive for discussing that that vision that he has because people are fighting and fighting fighting tends to polarize people fighting tends to deepen um, ethnic identities and, eth and ethnic grievances again it's another reason why we are so committed to trying to find a way to promote a peaceful way forward you know that as I've as I've said in other as in other forum and you may have, have heard me say this when I talked to the when I've had the honor to meet with the Prime Minister, he's been very generous with his time and his analysis. When I've had the opportunity to talk to to TPLF leaders, um, I'm struck by the fact that what they define as their primary goals, the two the the sides' primary goals, are not mutually in contradiction. They're not mutually irreconcilable. The Prime Minister, understandably, wants to see 
the Tigrayan forces out of Amhara and out of Afar and back in Tigray. That's an understandable objective, and it's one that we share. Um, the Tigrayans, the Tigrayan leadership, TPLF leadership, tell us they want to see an end to the um, humanitarian problems, the commercial blockade of Tigray. That's an understandable objective. We share it. These things are not mutually irreconcilable. These things can be re reconciled through a political process. Um, I know that the Prime Minister and probably the TPLF leaders don't believe us when we say there's no military solution to this conflict. You know, they're, they're clearly pursuing military, what they would see as a military solution. Our point is pursuing a military con solution is too costly. It's too costly for Ethiopia and you can achieve the goals that the two sides defined through peaceful means. We're not looking to have this an American plan. We're not looking for anything other than the American diplomatic tools to promote this, but we are looking for um, a way to promote a peaceful way to address the basic needs of the, of the Ethiopian people, to preserve the unity and the dignity of the Ethiopian people. Mm -hmm. um, Ambassador, I want to go to the negotiations. Uh, yesterday, uh, the spokesperson for the Prime Minister Avi gave a press conference and she said uh, Ethiopia is open to negotiations, to peaceful resolution, and she said she's waiting, uh, or Ethiopia is waiting uh, for recommendations from uh, former Nigerian President, President Obasanjo. Can you uh, give us some um, uh, clarification where we are on the negotiations? Well, again, the United States is not on center stage here. This, you know, this is not an American negotiating process. This is, this is using the American diplomatic tools behind an African initiative to try to persuade the Ethiopians to pursue their objectives through, pe through, peaceful, through peaceful means. And I've, I've been in touch with President Obasanjo. He's a you know, very experienced, credible leader on the African continent. He's worked on a lot, of, a lot of different mediation and peace processes. And I'm convinced that with political will on the part of the, Ethi on the Ethiopian side, these, the problems that you, that you and others identify can be addressed through political negotiation means. And with that, I'm sorry, but I've, I think I need to move on to another appointment, but I very much appreciate having this opportunity to discuss with, to discuss with you and to reach out to the important audience that, that um, your network represents. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador. I hope this is the first of many uh, opportunities. And if you want to make a statement to the Ethiopian community, our uh, airwaves are always open for you and for any other U.S. government uh, institutions. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this has been uh, an uh, insight from Washington, D.C. Today we had discussion with uh, Special Envoy uh, Jeffrey Feltman about U.S. policy on Ethiopia. Unfortunately, we didn't finish our questions, but uh, we greatly appreciate Ambassador Feltman and the U.S. State Department. We hope to work with, together to improve the relations between Ethiopia and the United States. Until next time, bye-bye. Black Fridays, Thanksgivings, Christmases, New Year's Lemony, but or not Sabia Tafanaklo, there have Langlit Tadargo Wagani, Blue, San Jose, California, and Migan, you would Ethiopia and Naya Ethiopia with a judge. Bamet Balumetic, Logan Makatalam Hon, Tatka Tanestal. December I missed Hulat Shayan, Kawan PM Jamro, Dink is a Gijita Zagai Tawal, Ersom, Bekaber Tatar Tawal, Yakaberin Guduch, Ambassador Fitzumarega, Gazit and Yamat Tasabia Katala, Artist Tesfai Sima, Adarashu, I am Mr. Zero Zero, Masonic Drive, no, Yimtu. December I missed San Jose I Kerm Ethiopia in Natin Axal Logan Darash Wagan Wit about Jagarathi Mitnuru, Ethiopia Wan. Ethiopia, Kagabach Betty Luna Fatana, Ashana Fiona Mitotao, Betankaraljo Chabatana, Tagat Lono.
ይሄንን በመረዳት በመላው ዓለም የሚገኙ ኢትዮጵያውያን እያደረጉት ያለውን ቅስቀሳ እጅክ የሚበረታታ ሆኖ ተገኝቷል ለኢትዮጵያ የምንሰጠው ድጋፍ የተቀናጀ እንዲሁም ሀገሪቱን መልሶ ለመገንባት ይውል ዘንድ አንድ ወጥ የገንዘብ ማስተላለፊያ አካውንት መክፈት አስፈላጊ ሆኖ በመገኘቱ እነሆ ከውጭ ጉዳይና ከገንዘብ ሚኒስቴር ጋር በመተባበር ይህ ቋሚ አካውንት ተከፍቷል በዚህ መሰረት ካውን ጀምሮ በመላው ዓለም የምትገኙ ኢትዮጵያውያን በሚከተሉት አካውንት ቁጥሮች በመጠቀም ገንዘብ ማስተላለፍ የምትችሉ መሆኑን ባክብሮት እንገልጻለን አካውንቱን መንግስት በቀጥታ የሚቆጣጠረው በመሆኑ ገንዘቡ ደርሷል አልደረሰም የሚለውን ስጋት ሙሉ በሙሉ ያሰግደዋል በቋሚነት የገንዘብ ድጋፍ ለማድረግ የምትፈልጉም ሆነ በተለያዩ መንገዶች ሰብስባችሁ ገንዘብ ለማስገባት የምትፈልጉ ሁሉ ይህንን አካውንት ተጠቀሙ ልብ በሉ ከዶላርና ዩሮ ውጪ ሌሎች የገንዘብ አይነቶችን የምትጠቀሙ ዜጎችም በዚህ አካውንት መጠቀም ትችላላችሁ አገራችን ኢትዮጵያ ራሳቸውን ለመስዋዕት ዝግጁ በሆኑ ልጆቿ ህልውናውና አንድነቷ ይተበቃል 